Hey, it's Matthew Todd and welcome to module 5. Welcome to the last module in this course. So I want to make use of this lesson to recap and highlight what I think are the key takeaways of the course so far. So I want to highlight what I think are the important strategies and principles that we've covered. Before leading in the remaining lessons, I want to cover some slightly more advanced details. So I'll take this opportunity to go through some key points I want to highlight that I think are going to benefit you as you get into TDD and into using testing for purpose. And also, I'll cover some ways for you to start putting what we've been talking about into practice on your real day-to-day -day projects if you haven't already done so. So to recap, we started off in module one, covering the foundations, the fundamentals really, the mechanics of TDD. And in that module, I really wanted to set the foundations and also demonstrate you following a pretty strict version of TDD doing more smaller iterations than most people tend to do day to day with TDD. And I wanted to do this to demonstrate what taking the smallest iterations possible could look like, what the smallest, most rapid feedback cycle could look like. And I think it serves as a good reminder of what a basic form of TDD can look like when, sometimes myself included, we are tempted to take bigger shortcuts and try to create more of the test or more of the application code in one go. I find it's a useful exercise if I find myself trying to do too much in one go or trying to deal with too much complexity at once, then I can take a step back and say what's the simplest form of what I'm trying to test or code here look like? How can I speed up this feedback loop? So in those situations, I'll take a step back, revert to the stricter form of TDD, and then continue as before. We then moved on to module two, which I still think is the most important part of this course, as it's where I see there being the most opportunity for people to make a simple change that can have a massive impact. So I introduced the strategy of testing for purpose, taking a viewpoint where each individual test, each unit test method, should be responsible for the verification of a single very specific piece of behaviour. Even if this results in, and actually especially if it results in, multiple tests that all call the same method. And also don't be afraid to make your test method names themselves longer, as this is going to help with a number of things. It'll help make this code more maintainable going forward, as it's more descriptive, but it will also help to put you in the right mindset where you're approaching each test method with the right intentions. I believe it is so important to manage test and application complexity by following this rule. This probably will result in the way you write your test methods changing slightly. Now, I'll dig a little deeper into this in the next lesson, where I'll talk about some of the impact of doing this when it comes to test doubles. And in that module, I also set the first coding exercise, so I hope you've been able to progress this and get some feedback from myself on your code. But if you haven't, then that's fine. But please don't give up on that. Go back to this, send me your code to review, as I found this is when people are able to really get the most out of this course. Now, moving on, module three, we looked at refactoring. What we meant by this, what the implications of refactoring are on the test and application code. So we saw how testing for purpose helps rather than hinders a refactoring effort. Because the verification of each piece of behavior is performed in a distinct test method, we aren't left with lots of random test breakages when we refactor. Instead, we just have to think about addressing the test in terms of thinking about where each piece of behaviour now lives, how it's migrated as part of this refactor. Then, in the previous module, module 4, we took a step back from the low-level test details of the test and application code to talk about test levels. Uh, we also introduced test statements as a way to think about and clearly articulate a test strategy that should mean we aren't duplicating test effort. So we'll make sure we're not creating more brittle, harder to maintain, higher level tests that we just don't need. So we've covered a lot of content, and I hope I've managed to go beyond the mechanics of TDD and give you some real strategies and techniques you can start using to improve your tests, whether they're written before or after the application code. And as I said before, you do have lifetime access to this course. You have the Facebook group. You can also email me anytime at matt at fluent.software with any questions you may have. Okay. So that's all I want to cover in this lesson. I hope it's been a useful reminder to cover what I think are the main takeaways from each module so far. And I'll see you in the next lesson, where I want to cover some slightly more advanced details relating to testing for purpose. Some details that might seem subtle, that you might not realise when starting to use this strategy. So that's it for now. I look forward to seeing you then.